So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Morris Federation series of events during lockdown. And uh, today we have a workshop on Ilmington, and uh, we've got Andrew Knight, Lynn Steele, and Tony Warren, who are going to take us through two jigs, Nelson's Praise and Jockey to the Fair in the style of Ilmington. So handing straight over to Andrew Knight. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd just like to um, draw your attention to um, my foot view, which is known as Drew, which may be highlighted, um, and to watch a very much more proficient and consummate dancer. Please have a look at Lynn Steele, um, and she's also highlighted into this. Um, so you will see various different people doing um, doing these dances. Um, glad to see a couple of the uh, Ilmington Morris men here and uh, we'll be dancing in the style of Ilmington, um, which um, we agree with them is exactly the right way of describing this. And uh, um, we do agree on virtually everything apart from the odd styling difference um, in terms of our researches. Um, jigging is necessarily selfish um, how you do it is yours and there is um, all sorts of reasons why your styling might be slightly different, um, age and um, ability being the two main ones I would have thought uh, as anybody who's watched Owen and Reese dance will, uh, will attest. Um, without further ado then, um, I just um, you're going to get music from Tony Warren uh, on mandolin um, and we're going to do our best to time this up correctly. Um, Nelson's praise is where I'm going to start. What I'd like to do is to do a run through of each of the elements again. Um, I think pretty much everybody who was here before is here now, um, with potentially one or two, um, one or two differences. If anybody has got any issues, um, Pauline and Jenny will be watching the screens for anybody with problems and will bring that to my attention. Uh, or if you want to write something in chat, do that. Um, I generally pick that up uh, as it's on my second screen. Um, I have, I think, one small thing I need to do. I should now have turned on original sound, so we'll get a better sound system coming through this time. Um, okay, so we're going to warm up. So find your handkerchiefs. And for those people in the garden, Graham, that looks pretty chilly out there. Okay, we're just going to step from one foot to the other, literally up and down, rising on your heels, bring your knees up. Start to raise the activity. And then you can start moving around the room and start picking that up a bit faster. Remember not to go in the same direction for too long. It does tend to make you giddy. And then start bouncing up onto the toes as if you're doing single stepping. And this is a good time to check your stepping for stepping technique. Just as another reminder, everybody should know this, but as another reminder, the change of the feet is in the air. So you will leave the ground before you put the next one down. And the foot is always kicked out in front with a Morris step. And according to the annals, Ilmington is a fairly straight legged change. Now change double stepping and each of the footfalls comes forwards. This always looks like a good styling for the stepping. And just as an indicator, the thing to avoid is running on the spot. This is not Morris step. This is Morris step. Okay, now start to move the arms up on the hop. And 
and that should be starting to get your breath deeper and it should be starting to really bring the blood to moving around your system and then go into some side movements remember to move the arms and have a rest keep moving though but rest and keep off the dancing and now some long stretches but never static always keep them moving so that you get the movements of the joints to their fullest extent arms backwards arms forwards a lunging movement a lunge on the other side and you go as far as you can go if you want to push it just to push it a little bit you will not be developing if you're not slightly challenged but being too challenged will lead to injury so please don't be too challenged just a little bit challenged okay so I'm gonna run out of breath because I'm a year unfit in spite of the fact of having done these um, <clears throat> One of the features that I teach with Ilmington is the spread of the hands at the output outside part on step three. And what we've been playing with since the last um, presentations that I've been doing is the down and out. If you turn your palms forwards, you get a much more demonstrable out on the double step. This is a right foot start, so it's down, and you come up on the hop. So it's always an and one, two, three, or a one, two, three, and movement. But as you come down, turn the palms out and you get that spread of the handkerchiefs down and out behind you. And it's all you have to do is just turn your forearms and it will happen. Okay. Have a rest again. <clears throat> we had some discussions and reading the book that Paul has put together and kindly supplied. Uh, the end section of each of the figures has a set of single steps before uh, an ending movement. Um, and the ending movement is written up either as a foot together jump a jump which is different to a foot together jump or a step and caper we've tended to go for the step and caper version the book says foot together jump um, and the old notes and our original notes say step and land feet together and the step and land feet together i think is probably the oldest default um, but not always what's recorded. And again, individual variations and individual stylings um, will lead you to be able to do one rather than the other. So if I show you each of those, and you might want to switch to the feet view for those, you're either going to do step and step and step and, which is the three steps and a jump. If you're going to do a foot together jump, it'll be step and step and feet together land. If you're going to do the caper version, it'll be step and step and step caper, landing one foot, not two feet. I have no particular view. Paul probably does, but I have no particular view as to which one it should be. Um, and it is really basically written in the notes uh, for you to choose and to style it how you how you will. And it will be based very much on your own abilities and those things that you can time. A number of King Iners couldn't get the three steps land with the hands. It is rubbing your tummy and patting your head, that one. Um, but others were timing it perfectly well. We're going to use step and caper to, uh, to teach, um, but any of the others are, are optional. Okay, so I'm not going to get people to try it. I'm going to let you try that one basically for yourselves. The next part that confuses loads of people with this is the um, the flick and the flick on the single step section at the end of each of the elements um, is something that people focus on. My advice is 
don't focus on it. Don't even think about it. When you get your hands into the right place for the step, the step will naturally just do the flick on its own. Um, and really, I'm going to, whilst I've highlighted it, I'd like now for you to completely forget it. <laughs> um, just to demonstrate what I mean, when we're doing the single step part with the arms, you're going to go down, hop, up, hop. And if you're going to now do another thing like a foot together jump, your hands are in the wrong place. Do not, con do not control or, or, or diminish the expression of the step that you're going to do. Fully express that step and make sure that it's visible and then put your hands in the right place for the next bit. And that's going to mean that you're going to need a very sharp change of position. So you're going to end up with down and up and down and up for the bit that I'm going to teach. And the same thing will apply in the foot together jump. Down and up and feet together jump. Um, question for Paul. If you're doing a feet together jump, do you do down and up arms or over the top arms? No, down and up, uh, down, down and up, and up Andrew, arms. yeah. And the, 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 the bit that you've said don't think about, you're absolutely right there. We, we refer to that as a snatch, really. Yeah. It's because it's a half up movement. But um, what, what does help to aid your arm movements is don't go too high with them because the, the notes, of, of, and we've always had it, is up to chest height and out rather than uh, if you go right up you get the tendency of coming down and going back rather than out to the side so if you yep. come up to chest tight and out um, but if that answers your question yeah that's brilliant thank you um so just to, to um put in to teach what um, paul's just said if you're doing a foot together jump it's up in front and down it's not over the top mm. Over the top would be a field town move. And what we've just had confirmed is it's that move. Okay, so let's just try that a bit. Um, I'm gonna try it with, um, just on its own without music for now. Okay, so I'm just gonna look, literally be looking at step, out, step, hop, step, land, which everybody should know how to do quite happily and get the arms with it, and it's not the steps I'm interested in, it's you getting the arms with it. Okay, so it's step and step and step and And either go chest high or high high. So this would be up arms or high up arms. Okay, anybody got questions? Anybody need more time? Let's do it several times. So it's down and up and up. Are we all good? Right, let's run a once to yourself. Let's then run the foot up. The foot up is six doubles, two back step, sorry, two singles, step caper as taught. And it's a right foot start. And I'm just going to do the once to yourself as a jump at this stage. Um, with the music, please, Tone. do that several more times. Anybody got any problems up to now? No hands on heads? Good, that's all good. Like, let's um, just have several foot ups in a row then please.
Sorry, technical hitch. Okay, I picked up Pauline's message about moving my camera, <laughs> um, which I hope I now have. She will tell me again if I haven't. Um, any problems? Anybody need anything going over? Everybody happy? Nobody's saying anything. Can we do this for yes and that for no? Sarah, I knew you'd be fine. <laughs> <clears throat> okay so we're going to move now into the side steps um when i'm teaching the side steps it's an open side step um i'm sure everybody knows what an open side step is and just in case nobody does it's a side movement where you put your feet apart rather than where you put your feet across <clears throat> and i'm teaching the arms down with winds here and I think that's a variance from um, the current Ilmington side who do winds up here. Um, so if you're going to do it like the modern side, up here, if you're going to do it like us, down here. And again, that's just a styling difference between the two teams and between the two styles. So what we're going to do is a long side step to the right. So you're going to do step behind step behind step behind step hop and then the same back in the other direction and then we're going to do two double steps and then we're going to do the cross the cross hops and the cross hops in the middle of the chorus are i'm going to teach left foot across first and the reason for left foot across first is you don't want to be fudging it when you come out of them. Because if you, unless you put left across first, you will have the wrong leg in the air to do the end section. So what we're going to end up doing is, um, and I'm going to look at Lynn's camera now, heel toe heel in the cross hops, just as a, a tweak to the styling. So as you're hopping on one leg, it's heel, toe, heel. Nelson's is a nautical thing, so we've kind of, we've just added a little bit of a shine on that little bit there, Paul. So you can um, take that as well if you're long tip. Vin's <laughs> <laughs> um, not waving at me, so I must have got that one right this time. <laughs> um, so that's, we're going to end up then with two doubles, two singles, step caper to finish that um that section um so the whole thing demoed i'm going to get you to look at lynn's camera please and lynn's going to go and run through the chorus for us now while i catch my breath a moment okay are we ready sidestep one two three four one two double steps left foot heel heel doubles Two singles and caper. Okay, anybody need that again? 
Um, Leslie, yeah, absolutely, we'll do that again. Okay, watch Lynn's camera again. Okay, are we ready? Side step to your right, off for you. One, two, three, four, hop, one, two, two doubles. Left leg, heel, heel, turn, heel. Doubles, two singles, and caper. Leslie's good. Anybody else need anything extra? No, we're all good. Nobody's showing up. Good, 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 good. Okay, let's try that with the music. We're going to have um, part intro and then into that to practice, please. cracking through things all over the place today. This is brilliant. We'll have to come up with a third jig just to use the time up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be interesting. It'll be done on the fly as well. Um, <clears throat> um, the slows. The slows are in groups of three, not four. This always adds a lovely bit of confusion to everybody who can count to four because suddenly they only have to count to three. Musically minded amongst you will realise you've got a whole beat spare. <laughs> um, we preferred the full 16 bar music for the dance um, with the extra space and timing that that allows, um, particularly in the second slow, um, which just looked terribly rushed at the end, we felt, if that's... Um, only done for 15 notes. Um, so what you will see in um, the Handbook of Morris Dancers by Lionel Bacon is their truncation of the music to accommodate it. I think the original music has the 16 full beats in it and I'd encourage you to keep that and then just make a big display and show um, of the element that's missing and it's only missing in the first slow, it's not missing in the second one. Um, and I have watched the Ilmington men dance it and uh, it was very interesting to see how they resolved this issue um, and how the book is written to resolve this issue as well, which um, was, was, was quite, a, quite an education. Um, so the first slow, um, choice of two, and uh, what we're going to be doing is cross apart and together um, as the, the dances. And again, Lynn's not going completely horrific at me, so I must have got that one right as well. <laughs> um, well let's switch to Lynn's camera, please, and let's, uh, let's see that done. Okay, so you do it five times in all. So we're doing cross, part, together. Cross, apart, together. Cross, apart, together. Cross, apart, together. That's the last one. And then we get ready to go into the doubles <laughs> so we raise with a full and is a is a long rise to get the the height for the next part of the stepping um, and we finish with two double steps two single step caper in our version okay should we give that a go without the music first just to get a feel for it and then with the music second so you're going to literally go cross apart together cross apart together cross Apart, together, cross, apart, together, cross, apart, together, and... And that will be easier to time with the music. 
what you have seen Lynn and I both do is we jump from each of the elements into the next element. So we don't drag the feet, we leave the ground and then re-land in the new position. And that's what I'm basically wanting people to be doing, please. Okay, so with the music, end B intro and then a C music in order to um, run through the, the slow. And we're going to be doing the whole slow thing, I think three times, and then we'll take a break. Problems doing that and timing it with the music. We're all happy. Yeah. Everybody I can see is happy, and Jenny's not madly waving at me, so everybody else must be happy as well. Brilliant. Um, can we do the C through three times this time now, Tone, please? Catch your breaths a moment. <clears throat> Everybody's up together with that. We're all good. Good, good, good. I'm going to have to run you through these things 20 times because we're running out. We're, 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 we're so, so short of time. <laughs> We've got a really good team. Okay, so we've got that one. What I'd like to do is the whole dance from the beginning through the first slow and through the second chorus, please. But I'll do it when I've got my breath back. I should have gone to Reese's thing. Right, let's go for it. Uh, so we're having an A intro, foot up, chorus, first slow, chorus. Got a query in chat. Yeah. Is, is there a little hop between the slows and the double capers? Uh, yeah, there probably is, Ab. More than likely. I think I just tend to do a rise up. So what you mean, ready to go? Yeah, yeah I, I, I tend to rise, but you do kind of leave the ground at that point as well. Um, I think what it turns out to be is whatever you need to do to get your timing right and get into it again. There isn't a definite movement in there. So actually fill it with display rather than fill it with dance move. Although even static, if you're performing, you're still dancing, even if you're static. And in a jig, probably doubly, you have to hold the audience's attention or they think you will have finished. So you really need to engage with them and do something. So we've used the slow rise and they can see that you're still doing something that's in part of that performance. 
So actually make it a performance element. I'm not suggesting you go off and climb up a tree or end up in a bush. And I have seen people jig through a bush. <laughs> Just not this one. Uh, there's no prizes for guessing who that was. Um, <laughs> well, it has to be Simon. Who else would do it? <laughs> Okay, let's do that to dance, please, with the music. Whole dance up to the end of the second chorus. Okay, take a breather. I hope you weren't watching me because I messed that up. <laughs> <laughs> First time. Okay, anybody have any timing problems or issues with that? <laughs> Nothing there. So, a comment I would make if you are of a musical mind, you will know that the slows are slightly fast. And maybe that the fasts are slightly slow. <laughs> the, uh, the timing is based around lots of bouncy height and flight time. And it tends to be the kind of speed that King Islas dance at. Um, coming straight out of lockdown and in a day, we'd probably want it a bit quicker. Um, but what Tony does is to just raise the tempo on the on the slow section so that the two legged jumps are not quite such a um, an on the ground. If you find the main stepping is too slow, it's because you're not jumping high enough. You just simply have to have more flight time um, in your own performance to whomever it is you're playing to. You decide with them how fast you want it. You don't nail it to somebody else's tempo because it's your dance and your expression of that dance that you're performing. And it's important that you do it at the rate that you would like it done. What I would caution though is if you go too fast, you will lose the expression of the step and the features of the style. And if you lose the style, you're doing general um, bleeding, bleeding, bleeding town, whatever it is. <laughs> Turn. <laughs> um, and, and it isn't actually then specifically Ilmington that you're dancing. It's some Morris that kind of looks like it with one or two elements, um, rather than actually focusing on exactly how to express that full traditional um exactly as those steps were done that you're you're actually the story you're telling did you want to jump in paul because i can see you mouthing stuff and, and reaching for the camera 
Uh, no, I was. Uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And and the point that you've made, it is a jig, and a jig is individual to the individual dancer. So uh, I agree with everything you've you've said. The only comment I have got is that um, I I note that there seems to be a slight pause in the music on the cross steps before you go into that double step again. Is that yeah? That's beat not... sixteen. Ah, yeah. We don't tend to put that in. It's the 16 bars tends to be continuous and you just right. dance through it. And I think that was the, the question about what do you do in that particular bit, if I've got that right? Um, and, and you said do a bit of a show. But yeah, uh, it, yeah, I don't it, was. Know. it seems to work for us to just uh, keep, keep it rolling continuously. But um, OK. Um, and again, if that's if that's, you know, an individual dancer's expression and how they understand it, then that's what they should do. That's um, right. Yeah. That's rather nice. than nail it to just what, what, what this has been presented as. We, yeah, we're yeah. just giving you the learn rather than the, the finished product. Yeah. I, I, one other thing, uh, Andrew, you're absolutely right that you don't want a dancer to do too fast um, because you do lose, lose the idiosyncrasies of that particular style of that tradition. And, yeah. uh, you know, the um, uh, the arm movements in Elmington are somewhat different to everybody else's. Um, and those steppings and the, the the cross steps are almost across the music in in some respect but um, yeah. i agree with you it's good cool brilliant um and with that in mind and paul sticking his um mute button back down thank you <laughs> thank you um we'll move on to the second slow um with this one we do have um the extra beat catered for um, and this is a hand clapping uh, movement um, where you're basically going to be kicking legs and, and clapping your hands. Um, and I'm going to get Lynn to show it again because um, I'm still getting my breath back and she's a professional dancer. So what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So what we're doing here again, it's five times and it's counts of three again. So we're doing a clap up here, clap under your leg, clap behind your back. So alternate legs. And then we finish with another clap. So we've actually done the, the whole 16 that time. OK, let's do that again. So we're doing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And last one and then straight into your doubles if there is there is no time for that um show rise that we've just been discussing in this one you've used that time with the clap uh, in in this particular version um and then we just finish up um and the last chorus finishes on four plain capers rather than two singles and a step caper and i noticed that um the uh, Ilmington Morris men's habit is to dance the four capers um, in uh, turning 360 degrees. And we like that. <laughs> Paul? Uh, Andrew, that was that was one particular chap uh, did that. I mean, as you say, jigs are individual. And, they um, are, and we uh, like that. Let's <laughs> call, him, call him Woodhead, who has sadly passed away now. But that was his, his, his thing to dance around like that. And I think a lot of the men have started doing that. And he also then finished with uh, ending on one knee with a show. Yeah. So arms out and then down with a knee. But um, some men will say that's a bit over the top, but still. Oh. <laughs> Individualistic. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Um, again there's some variations in the in the expression of this dance that you might um um might want to take forwards we we have adopted his four capers in a row um and when we come to jockey um it becomes uh, a little more important to use that um particularly with that dance um, um which we will see uh, in uh, in about sort of i don't know probably 10 minutes or so with the way the team is is progressing so brilliantly um <laughs> So um, let's just give that a go to some music, please. Um, so we're going to do three lots of C music um, and we're going to do the hand clapping bit just to solidify that in.
just as a marker, I would, uh, and this is something I wasn't doing every time, the clap in front should be at eye height, please. So it's definitely right out here um at eye height which makes a big show um and of course everybody can get their knee to night you know their knee right up and their foot straight and without bending the knee and all the rest of it can't they <laughs> me neither <laughs> for those who can't but it does look better if you work to that and with that in mind um i'm going to point you back at reese's uh, videos um and hamstring stretching particularly useful to get that done um, and somewhat more frequently if the stretches alone are being done than, than he's advocating um, I'd reckon every second to third day rather than once a week for that um, and just so everybody knows osteopath by profession so we can uh, have some physiology bias on that one um, okay so Whole dance. Yes. Everybody got their breath? All good? You've got a couple of a question in the chat, Andrew. Okay, let me deal with those first. Give me a breather as well. Yes, Mike, I agree. Uh Andy, straight kick if you can. If you can't, do the hamstring stretches. <laughs> Lovely. Are we good to go? We are. Fantastic. Hold dance, please, Tony. Comments, questions? Have I killed you yet? If that's a no, we'll do it again. <laughs> Andrew, I'd just like to comment on Lynn's arm movements. They're very good. Not that yours aren't, but uh, Lynn's, uh, I, I, I would identify with our movements there of coming up to the side and, uh, and up to chest height rather than going too high with them, you know. 
Right. Yeah, yeah well done, Lynn. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. For what it's worth. <laughs> I think Andrew and Lynn would like you to answer some questions so they can get their breaths back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the must be on. Oh, there's a question in the chat, Andrew. Uh, yes, Ab, there is definitely a way of remembering which foot starts the slows. Um, you want to be weight bearing on the right. Um, and that's pretty much in all in all versions, whether it's the cross hops in the middle. Um, so uh, in the slows, I tend to do I tend to do left across first, so you kind of weight bear towards the back foot. But other than that, it's just learning it, really. Yeah, I, I don't think that's really an important thing, is it? Which foot you put in front no. on, the, on the first slows. On the second, obviously, it is your right leg you're kicking first. I don't know. Paul might have something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wouldn't make any comment because it, it like a lot of these issues I mean uh, practicalities of doing a jig when you sit down and think what you and try to say what you're doing it's very difficult it's dead easy to just dance it and let somebody watch it um, uh, you know I can't make any comment on that you do what you feel is natural I'm definitely crossing my right foot in front on the first slows that's not to say it's completely right but that's what I do uh, I couldn't tell you which one I do. Um, <laughs> I've got a feeling it's the left one, but I couldn't. I couldn't tell you. Um, um, by the three hops, Sam, I think you mean the three hops in the chorus. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, yes, I will, Francis. Um, you do probably a preparatory hop before you start the three double steps. I would expect that that would be what I would do, whether it's right, whether it's what I'm going to say or whether it's what I actually do on the day is another matter. Um, but I expect I hop into it. Um, that would be kind of default, um, what I would expect to do, I think. Um, the arms for the last four capers, down and up arms which is what we've been using um, and what I learned originally. Um, so you're doing kind of exactly what you would expect out of Field Town. Sorry, Paul, but you would. <laughs> <laughs> um, so rather than capers being wines as Bledington, they're down and up arms as Ilmington. How high do the arms go, Andrew? Uh, I would go high, high. Uh -huh. I wouldn't do chest. I would be going high. Um, but that's probably incompetence on my part rather than um, anything else. <laughs> but you need big leaps. Um, and the point of big leaps is big arms. And if you don't do big arms, then you're probably not going to do big leaps. OK, I'll demo it. So the, the demo is a request. So uh, let's do that. So the last four capers would literally be from high down and up on, on successive um, capers. So you're going to do and you end, you come down on the first one, up on the second, so that you come up on the last to your present position. Because you want to finish with the, with the show. Now, whether that's one knee as, uh, as Paul's friend was doing, or whether that's standing on two feet or one foot on the heel, your call. Um, it's individual. Andrew, Andrew I like the, I like the as, you, as you say, finishing with one foot in the air and, and both arms are, uh, aloft. I mean, that's a good... That's a that good... would be the natural progression from four capers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But as you say, it's it's individual. Um, that that doesn't uh, indicate the style of the the actual jig and the tradition of no. where it's coming from. The finish no, is the individual thing. Agreed, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, should we do that one more time, and then we'll move on to jockey.
as you're all too well aware, I forgot the four capers. <laughs> so, um, before we move away from Bold Nelson and his praise, uh, does anybody have any questions or anything that they would like clearing up on that one? Uh, mostly about the chorus, I think, because the elements are the same. Uh, from Jane, trailing arm on the sidestep I've got by my side. To be honest, if I'd have chopped it off and left it on the table, I'd know more where it was. <laughs> Uh, when you have your own musician in front of you and your musician is going to um, be watching you um, and has the opportunity of watching you where you are not watching you from afar which is currently the case uh, the timing is going to be a lot better um, because if you've given your musician a couple of beers and a cheese sandwich, they will probably catch you. Pork pie, I think, is the thing, isn't it, Tone? Isn't that what we go for? Pork pie? Lovely. Yes, pork, pork pie. Beer helps. There you go. But I, I always, <laughs> as a musician, I say, I'll do whatever the dancer wants, and they don't have to tell me in advance what they want. They just have to dance it. The advantage here um, between Tony and myself is, and, and for Lynn as well, I think, um, we have been dancing to Tony's music for a very long time. And um, he knows how to read how we're going to go and where we're going to go. Um, they don't, you don't need to explain anything um, once you have a musician of that calibre. If you have an extremely competent musician that will always be the case anyway even if they've played for you before or not they will know what you're going to do um which is a which is a which is a boon which is why pork pies and beer work um because that way they don't just slightly slow you up by half a beat every now and again just to get you really unfooted they're cruel like Only gave me some pork pies then i think drew and i'll become a better musician yeah although in your case clive whiskey works doesn't it always <laughs> <laughs> okay so um if we're ready to move on to jockey to the fair um may we listen to the music uh just um, to begin i don't know Andrew, you've got a couple of things in the chat um comment on the cross hop um mike would you like to um unmute and express your Yeah, it's, uh, it seems to me that uh, when we're doing the cross hops in the chorus, then the fudge step either comes just before the cross hops to get to get onto the left foot, um, or else it comes at the end of the cross hops to get onto the right foot. Uh, yes, well, I, I tend to fudge it on the way in, not on the way out. Um, yeah, I, I, I like the way out to not be visible. I agree entirely. That's definitely my preference. Um, but you, you. you do you do get a change. You get a change of weight there at that moment to allow your left foot to be in the in the um, in the air to do the cross hop. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No worries. Um, it's it should be invisible, which is why you don't want it at the end of the cross hops. Otherwise, it would be very visible. Um, with any yeah, fudge okay. step you do, put them somewhere where nobody will see it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you know my uh, views on uh, fudge steps, so I'll leave it at that. I do, yeah. Salty caramel, definitely the best ones. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Jan. That's really nice. I, I really like that. Simplicity of the music. Oh, that's, that's lovely. Yeah. Okay. May we hear the uh, the jockey tune, please? Um, I know this is not in Ilmington's repertoire or in their collection, 
Um, however, the music comes from, from Ilmington um, and is in Roy Domit's notes. Okay, so those are the three elements that we're going to be using. Hopefully you'll have danced it in your head apart from the chorus so you'll know where all of the various bits. Uh, Paul, you wish to say something before the music. Please, please do say it now. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you, you made some comment about the fact that we don't actually dance it. I, um, you, you know, as you get older, memory fades, doesn't it? And uh, <clears throat> in fact, I've, I, 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 to be absolutely, <laughs> absolutely certain, I'd have to have a look at the notes that Roy Domit wrote in the 60s. I mean, he did a good job when he came around then. Obviously, a lot of the, uh, the dance inside had passed away and um, at that stage but I think that it worth saying that uh, uh, Jockey to the Fair was a, co a, a, a prevalent tune in Ilmington around about 1910 with Sam Bennett who was uh, not strictly a traveller as such but he got around a bit and um, he certainly picked up a lot of tunes from different places and I reckon that he picked the tune up and that's where it started to come into the tradition but um, uh, I, I don't I don't think it was used before then, but hey ho, what does it matter? I mean, it's a good jig tune, and uh, and I think the, detecting that uh, you know the tune of um, Jockey does have in in certain traditions has an extended B to it, hmm. and I think I was noting that um, that there. So um, yeah, yeah, but it's, it, 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 it just it it fits the genre really well, and that particular yeah. version, yeah. Um, I think Tony might just be able to add, add comment on this. I think it doesn't appear in any other tradition that version of it. Is he going to pick it up? Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. not not that I could find. Um, and the C music wasn't noted at all. Um, yeah. So that's mine. <laughs> but yes, I. Um, as a musician, it's my favourite jockey. As a tune, yeah. So I mean, it, it is unique then, um, and it is therefore and collected from Ilmington. Yeah. So um, there you go. We're, we are always on the lookout for ones that aren't aren't black book and a, and a dance, but have long legs and lots of history. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right. Good, Andrew. Can I, uh, can I just say that I think there's the, an extra long um, uh, chorus like that in the uh, Jockey to the Fair Ascot. And uh, it's just uh, 11, 11 plain capers on the trot, and, uh, which I like very much. But, oh, uh, yeah, but, but the, other guys, <laughs> the other guys in our side in Bristol uh, didn't seem very impressed. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> okay, so the chorus for Jockey to the Fair um, starts again with the uh, long side steps, and all we, all the rest of the chorus is just a mixture of of uh, stepping and playing capers, 
And this is particularly where the four plain capers turning in a circle come into play, or the whole thing would end with eight plain capers on the spot, uh, which is not terribly interesting, one has to say. Um, so you're going to be looking at doing long side step to the right, long side step to the left, two doubles, four plane, two doubles, four plane, and another four turning. That's only the last time though, isn't it, we do the turn? Uh, it is, um, it because people. you do the <laughs> single step break for all of the others. That's the last time only. Lynn's quite correct. Pick me up on that. Okay, so Just the other part point. is long side step, long side step back, two double, four plane, two double, four plane, two single, step caper except the last time when you do four plane capers turning around. Clear as mud? <laughs> Great. Questions? No. Brilliant. See music only. bad I meant B music only. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> what are you after Drew? Um, chorus please. Chorus. timed okay or would you like to do it some more you'd like to do it some more how wonderful <laughs> um three times through then chorus three times through Questions on that? <coughs> Lots of puffing. That's good. Again, the sequence for the chorus, or Bob it in the chat. Yeah, um, I'll do both. Right, it's uh. 
long side step to the right, long side step to the left, two double steps, four plain capers, two double steps, four plain capers, two single step caper or whatever break you're using. Okay, so that's actually got it written um, so that you can cut and paste it or copy it off or whatever it is you want to um, light the fire with it. I don't mind. It's in the notation as well, though, isn't it, Andrew? In it the, is in the notation. That we sent um, in the email. So people have got it there if they want it. All of those notations are available online. There is MP3s for these available online. There are dots for the musicians available online. And there are videos of bits of it as well as all of it available for you online. Um, no, Sue, I don't think he did. I think he noted the tune, but no steps. So quite possibly it wasn't a dance. Um, however, he did note it as a jig tune for Elmington. Um, which is why we picked it up, otherwise we would have walked on past. Um, of course, he might have been a musical jig tune rather than a dance jig tune, for all I know. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then we just literally went to the Ilmington form. We looked at how the Ilmington dances were done with uh, the help of Paul's book. Um, which no doubt he will furnish people with if you uh, via Morris Fed get in touch. Um, and um, we looked at the earliest recorded that we could we could get, took elements from everything that we could find evidenced out from the Ilmington tradition, um, and we put the jig together. Um, which, let's face it, is how everybody else did it. That's good, uh, Andrew. That's a notable way of doing things. I think that's what everybody, everybody should learn that step. Mm -hmm. You know, that, when I say step, I don't mean the Morris step, but the, mm -hmm. the you know, the process of, of researching something and, uh, and doing a responsible, um, you know, constructing something responsibly. It's very good. Thank you. Okay, so now you've got the chorus. Since the rest of the dance is absolutely the same, we can do the whole jockey to the fair. Let's give it a go, see where we get to.
catch your breath, we'll do it again. So the eagle eyed amongst you, how many errors did I make? <laughs> well, I, I counted know. five. <laughs> I was too busy making errors of my own, so I didn't. <laughs> I counted at least five. There was some Sherborne stepping in there. <laughs> there was a completely missed hand clap. So we're going to do it again because we want the exemplar to be somewhat better than that. Actually, just spotlight Lynn. <laughs> well, then, chances are I'll mess it up then. <laughs> okay, questions before we do it a last time. And then warm down as we've got just enough time to do that and then ask, answer questions for the hour and a half, I think. <laughs> Drink something, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. That's really good, though. It is. It's because yeah, I can't breathe. <laughs> Okay, let's go, do it again. Same thing again, please. Let's have a walk and do some stretches. We'll have in a moment or two, time for some questions. In terms of warming down, it should take at least as long as it takes to get your breath back. And the long stretches here are to do calf on the back foot and the hamstring on the front foot and switch round and the calf on the back foot and the hamstring on the front foot and with this one you can have a very much more static stretch 
which I tend to like to intersperse with some wandering about. Please do not forget your arms, so through your shoulder. And through your other shoulder. And remember to keep moving as part of that. I like the door jam exercise, which is I surrender with a stop here. So the front of your chest is pulled back. And then the same on the other side, which you can do against a stop. In my case, the edge of the screen, which is where my bookcase is, honest. And then return to a gentle roll forwards your back muscles are going to the side with the arm over the top being careful not to hit your light shade like I just did what I caution against in all cases is anything that involves head back or arch back in your spine and there are very good biophysical, physiological reasons for that. And there are times when a cup of tea is definitely the warm down. Isn't that right, Jenny? <laughs> and a peanut butter sandwich. And a peanut butter sandwich. Okay, I'm happy to take questions, but your warm up should last longer. So when the session is over, please do a bit more. No one has any questions. Not a single one. You haven't given them a chance to have a question yet, have you? <laughs> That's because we haven't regained our breath yet. <laughs> oh, I see, Nick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true, actually, yeah. No, it was all very clear. Good. But regarding the heel to heel, I find it easier to fudge after. Fine. It's your dance. <laughs> you do it how you do it. Okay. And in some cases, it goes this way today. Absolutely. <laughs> The main thing is to have went that way today. In advance, because <laughs> if you're trying to decide while you're doing it, you'll get it wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Sarah Crofts, in your wildest dreams, there is no way. <laughs> what was the question? Ask Reese. <laughs> Ask Reese or Owen or or, um, or any of anybody with the surname Pinder, they will do it for you. <laughs> um, I think I think to do the basic step in a jig as just plain capers is is pushing the envelope for the not fit. Uh, Jan, the, um, the, the the tune is Bold Nelson's Praise. Um, it is a Princess Royal variant. Strangely enough, Andrew, uh, we, we always refer to it as Bold Nelson's Praise or, or BNP. Uh, I notice a lot of people <laughs> just drop the bold off it, but um, that's mainly because of, as you say, the, the music is noted as that. But it's uh, we call it BNP occasionally. Yeah, well, well, it's, 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 I think it's how it's written in your, um, in all of your notation. Uh, it's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what uh, Nelson's praise or bold Nelson's praise? Bold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some debate over the root tune of Jockey to the Fair, as it was known um, in the 1780s uh, as a country dance tune. And it was also in O'Neill's Music of Ireland in 1796. So, um, who knows where it came from? Clive, I feel educated from that. 
It's amazing what you can pick up off the web. I wasn't there. <laughs> and it's uh, it's like a breath of fresh air hearing uh, hear the mandolin being played for the Morris as well. I'm just wondering whether there are any of our members that happen to play a mandolin that might be tempted. Are there anybody? What is there anybody watching? Graham, do you play mandolin? Oh, okay. We may be relatively... Ditchling, Ditchling has a mandolin player, uh, and there's only only one, apart from myself, there's only one uh, Ditchling person watching as far as I know. But um, I don't know. It, it's uh, refreshing when he does play it. It's, um, it's interesting, anyway. I think Leslie and Brian are here as well, Norm. Yes, I, yes, I, sorry, I did say hello earlier on to them on the chat. Yeah, sorry, folks. Yes. Uh, Sarah, we'll, we'll take a look at it uh, and get back to you. Um, please pass your details. You're the guinea pig. <laughs> um, maybe we can put together a lively jig workshop. Ooh. Let's Ooh, just say, rock. let's just say we all, um, We'll get the oxygen in and <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think we're at time now so um it's been lovely to see everybody and um if you could all unmute yourselves and give a round of applause for andrew knightlin still tony warren and Tony for helping me today hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Pauline, I'd just like to I just like to say to Andrew and uh, and Lynn, uh, uh, thank you very much for taking an interest in our tradition. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. It's it's been excellent to get heads together on it, Paul. I've really enjoyed that as a um, as an opportunity. Yeah, jolly good. Um, Let's hope that'll continue. And, yeah. You know the, the 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 spirit in which the um, the people who keep the tradition have have engaged with us as as outsiders doing it without talking to you first. Um, very commendable. Yeah. Well, thank you, Paul, for all your extra input as well today. It's been great. Thank you. Absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah. So thanks to everyone. We'll say goodbye. Oh, don't forget, ninth of uh, May workshop showcase. We'll be doing that dance again if you want to do it again. Okay, those dances again. <laughs>